Welcome to episode 11 of The Lion's Share. My name is Alistair McLean and I am a mentor of the pure masculine. I gain and translate wisdom through animism by sharing the love of nature through our own nature. Animism is the belief that objects, places and creatures all possess a distinct spiritual essence. And today is a great podcast full of wisdom that uses that essence. Today, instead of channeling an animal, I found myself channeling the emotion of pain. And so I spoke to pain and I asked, what is pain and what does pain have to tell humanity? Then I will discuss the current wars and the energies affecting them through this season of astrological balance in Libra and the solar eclipse that happens on Saturday and the signs of change that are happening. Welcome. The Lion's Share, straight from the heart. Welcome. The current energies of my journey, especially in this season of Libra, have been showing me the injustice in the world and the rage and anger that comes with that, that fire that burns inside, the fire that purifies during these dark times of war and abuse. And recently I have been feeling the collective world continuing to make choices for the old way, the old way of war and injustice, because it makes them feel comfortable because they don't want to change. They don't want to see a different tomorrow they want to know the world works the same way it did yesterday and then i turn on the news and there's another war i felt even more anger and more rage i was disgusted and i didn't know what to do so i just channeled what came through i shared something about this online recently and somebody said why don't you just feel compassion well compassion is powerful i don't deny it and i already feel compassion but it is not the solution to healing the energy of injustice in the body. For what we all feel inside and how we react to that energy in our lives and the lives of others is what counts the most. Often these suggestions come from the brain rather than the heart, for compassion cannot be felt until the rage of injustice has been felt and cleared from the system. If I have not cleansed myself of injustice and rage, then I would just be avoiding that that anger, that rage, that injustice, not to mention the healing potential that can provide me. Anger and rage is based on fire and to learn how to use that fire to channel that pain through the body, the mind and the soul is a gift. So I will not ignore the anger, but I will come into compassion and forgiveness once I have felt that injustice. So today I channel the emotion of pain. Pain of heart. What are you? Who are you? I am delirious with heartfelt rage. I am the sudden parts of you that trigger. I am the elastic rubber that flicks back in your face and enrages you. I am the elastic rage of nonsensical understanding. I am here to remind you that you are not ready until you fully accept who you are in this lifetime. I will constantly slap you in the face to help you remember who you are. It is painful, but how else are you going to stop and remember who you are if I do not jolt you to remember? I am the parts of you that cry when you cannot. I am the parts of you that fight when you fall. I am the one that stands and sits in the garden of light, echoing my voice, my rage, my love, my eternal song of loss. I call and call, but none answer my call. I sit in the bright white light of love, knowing the pain that exists within and outside of me. I sit within all that dare to fill me, for I am pain. I am the greatest teacher there is, for everyone notices me. Whether it is the physical pain of a scratch or a cut, or the crushing defeat of loss and grief. You will fill me, and it will tear you asunder, for I am pain, and I am heard loud and clear. My message may not be clear to your numb body and ignorant persons, but you will feel me whether you like it or not. You will all feel me, for I am the pain of your suffering, the pain of your love not being received. I am the pain of your loss and rage. I am the pain of your ignorance. It is only in acknowledging me, speaking with me and learning from me that you will ever overcome me, for I am the co-worker a co-worker of life and death. I lead you to the most exquisite places of healing and I teach all that feel me to land on their feet. 
I give courage to those who live with me. I give courage and love to those who feel me in their hearts. I am the stillborn, dying fawn at the feet of the mother dear. I am the relief of love that sits before her eyes when she brings her child to life with the brush of her tongue over its chest. I am the hidden love that sits between life and death, ignorance and courage. I am the trigger that is ignored when you rage away from me, for I am love. The message I communicate to you through pain, through your body, is to help you know me better, to know yourself better, to live better, to feel better, to be better. You may not always understand me, but I understand you, for I am you in its purest form. I am the part of you that exists outside of time and space, for I am God, I am the unique part of God that is you. I stand between you and the everlasting, the ever-knowing. I use my pain, my discomfort to message you, to let you know you are not following my instructions. We are always together, you are never alone. I know it may feel like that sometimes in your struggle. It is real. But you must learn somehow, you must find a way to exhaust beyond the reality you have created for yourself. You must recreate your reality. All you need to do is acknowledge me and listen. What is the message from pain for humanity? The pain you feel is the love that I am sending. You push me away because you are pushing yourself away. You push and push because you do not remember me and my love. My power scares you into running and hiding away. It is difficult for you to remember who you are because you are so attached to who you have become. You live away from your heart because you have journeyed so far away from it to gain the knowledge and wisdom that you believe you may need to end this lavish war of love. Come closer to feel me so that I may communicate with you more freely and guide you through the storm. I am here to tell you that you must find a way to come back to life, back to nature, back to love. It is imperative. It is your utmost greatest task, for without life you cannot live and fulfil your tasks ahead of you. You have everything you need. Find the way. You know the way, because you are creating it with every step that you take. The steps that you take towards love are great, and even though the steps you take are sometimes difficult and painful, you are doing it. And that in itself is far more gracious an act than any could ever wish to perceive. Why are we so hard on ourselves? Each of you has fought many battles and won. You have fought many battles and lost. But it was in battle that you made your greatest triumphs and your greatest losses. You focus on the losses because the pain of those losses is the greatest lesson to remember. How can we know our pain if we do not know? You only know through thinking you know. You must open your mind and body to feel more deeply. It is within your blood to feel beyond your imagining. It is within me, within you and your body to connect with all of creation. You are capable of incredible things, but you shy away from your responsibilities due to the lack of care you bring yourself. You suffer because you feel the need to suffer for what is life without pain. You have known pain to be love, and so you seek pain to feel love. This is the problem you are currently facing. You are being given opportunities to feel joy, to choose for joy and love, but you are still learning to feel in the right direction, to feel upwards into joy, gratitude and love instead of feeling down into anger, depression and guilt. It will take time to change this way of feeling in everybody's body, in everybody's thinking. But you can speed this up by coming more into your body, by coming more into life. Why is there so much pain and resistance in our bodies? There is pain in your body as a reminder to take care of it. You have many opportunities to learn from your body for it is a complex and beautiful organism and sacred vessel which will allow you to take stronger steps forward into life. It has and will continue to support you deeper and further the more you come to life. As individuals, it is up to you how easy that life is. Just remember that the life you create now is the life that you adore. 
Let nothing stand in the way of what you would like to create. Do not abandon yourself. Do not abandon your mission, your purpose. And do not abandon your love. It is part of your purpose to learn these lessons. It is difficult for some of you because you do not remember agreeing and creating this path for yourself. But you knew you could do it. And you also foresaw many difficulties. But the difficulties and pain are still nonetheless difficult and are your guide for the unknowing of the path. For this is why I come to you. How do we come into greater awareness of self-compassion? It is quite simple when you know, but it requires practice. It is the wholeness of understanding your presence in union with the time of presence. You must become present in your body. This is a task that requires a lot of practice. Humanity have moved very far away from the heart and into the mind. But you are now coming back into the heart. And this requires you coming more and more into the body. Coming more into the home of who you are. Practice breathing. Practice observing yourself in the presence of life. In the presence of conversation. Of other energy. Learn the energy of gentleness. By slowing your movements with intentional gaze into your life. Gaze into the joy, not the heartache. Start small. Focus on something you desire to have in your life. Write down what those dreams are. Then practice feeling them in meditation or just before you fall asleep. This will bring you so much joy and comfort in your future. On top of this, you can learn to face your upsets by approaching from a different point of view. You are used to approaching from the point of view of listening and understanding through the mind rather than feeling through the body and heart. The mind has been forthcoming in taking place in rulership, so you must give authority back to the heart, back to feeling, and there you will know true wisdom and feeling. It will be fun to feel the changes, but perhaps frustrating for you when it causes discomfort. Keep moving through all the obstacles and you will find the point that you can't quite see yet. Let it come into focus, for it is right in front of you. It is the focus of your goals, your purpose and what you wish to create in life so that was a message from pain what did you think about that i thought it personally it was quite remarkable um but now we want to move on to the energies of war so the tug of war why are people still choosing for war does it tug on your shame or does it tug on your heartstrings which would you rather play a love song or a song of war there is a choice within all of us to choose differently it works on all three lines of consciousness number one the first line myself two the second line myself and my partner three the third line the collective when we choose to avoid war and we choose love in our everyday life like taking responsibility for example for hurting someone else's feelings instead of doubling down or arguing your point these are small acts of courage. These are acts of love. And every time we choose for greater love, it echoes out. This is often known as the butterfly effect. When we choose for kindness, that kindness affects the other people affected by that kindness. And it starts to slowly spread and be imprinted within us. Now we are in the eclipse energy. The eclipse and the season of Libra, which is about injustice. Justice, balance and imbalance. But it is also about the energies of peace, of meeting in the middle. We are all responsible for the wars on this planet, but responsibility does not mean blame. We can all take responsibility for how we treat ourselves and each other, and through how we choose to react. Do we react or do we respond? If we continue to take a side, we perpetuate the order of separation. We perpetuate war. And when we perpetuate war, we perpetuate in balance so that we can never meet in peace. We can never meet in the middle, in the centre of justice, the scales of Libra. The new current war is a conflict of ages that has been passed down to the next generation. Taking choice away from those who had not previously suffered and arming them with suffering. This is the never ending pain of war and it happens everywhere. It just doesn't get the media coverage. When the wounded or the betrayed does not forgive, he does not move on or choose for peace. 
and one side chooses again for war, it is because of the pain of the father, the mother, the sister, the brother, the friend, and so on. It is a perpetuating circle of war that starts right at home. And as per my previous podcast on the frog medicine, the home is also a representation of the heart and how we choose to learn from the heart. This is how the three lines of consciousness happen. It happens in the three. So it happens in the one and vice versa. What happens in the family happens to the individual and outwards it goes, affecting everyone around the world. If we all come to an agreement to end the war between each other in every possible way, in our work, in our relationships, in our families and in ourselves, through forgiveness, through feeling, then we can truly end the war that has taken this world for millennia. Thank you for listening.